Hi, and welcome back to part three of lesson one of the Tailoring Thesis Like a Pro tutorial series. In this part of the lesson, we're going to make some simple customization, and while we make those customizations, we will learn about some of the best practices in CSS customization. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do with our custom CSS is we are going to adjust the column width of the columns. So if you go back over here and look at layout CSS, you remember that content column became 63.3 uh, EM. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to change that content uh, column. And so, in fact, we're going to come over here to our custom CSS. We're going to select down here. Uh, every time you customize something that is already set in Thesis, you want to start with a dot custom. So we're going to say dot custom and then a space and then the hash mark which indicates um, a specific kind of selector, the ID selector. So custom pound sign content. Is that what it was? Yeah, custom pound sign content. And then we're going to hit enter. We'll put a curly bracket enter enter another curly bracket and then in the space we'll type width colon let's call it um, 55 ems okay so we have set the width of this to 55 ems now let's go ahead and change custom container as well And uh, we're going to make that a width of 70 EMs. And we will save that. We will upload that using our file manager, or I mean our FileZilla, and refresh the site. And you can see that this column has changed in width. However, the takeaway from this is not that the column can change. The takeaway from this part of the lesson is that you shouldn't do what we just did. That is, you shouldn't change things that can be changed in design options here in your um, custom CSS. The reason is because we've just done, um, we've just put sizes on two different things that conflict with each other. And because they conflict with each other, it doesn't look right, right? Because this is still wider, and yet these lines come popping in, and stuff overhangs, and, um, but this is narrowed down quite a bit. The, the problem is, is that though the two things that we set are essentially mutually exclusive. And so it doesn't do either of them correctly. Um, what you want to do is, if you can make these changes in the design options, then that's where you want to do it. So we'll go ahead and delete those and save this custom CSS, and then we will upload that back to the site. And now the custom CSS won't be taking precedence, and so the layout CSS can kick back into place. Okay, so best practice number one, don't edit anything in your custom CSS that can be edited easily in design options. And the main reason for doing that is that a substantial portion, perhaps the majority of layout CSS, isn't actually set in these dialogues. The majority of CSS is calculated from the settings that you make inside these dialogues. So if you make a bunch of settings here, then Thesis makes a bunch of calculations, writes a bunch of CSS. If you go in and change um, parts of the CSS that have already been calculated here, it throws the rest of it off. So if you can make the change here, make the change here. That's best practice number one. Okay, now let's take a look at best practice number two, and that is write the minimum amount of the code necessary. Uh, recently, I answered a question on the DIY themes forums 
of a person who had uh, taken all of layout CSS and copied it into their custom CSS and then gone about changing it. That is way too much code for you to have to deal with. What you want to do is, if you want one thing to change, you want to make that one change. So for example, let's say we want to change the color of customized thesis like a pro, or color of the title, and we want to make it italics, and we want to make the uh, this tagline bold. Well, so the first thing we do is we come over here to the header, and this is where we change the color. And let's just say we're going to make the color purple. Okay, so we're say, changing that there. You can see that we cannot make the uh, the tagline bold from here, and we cannot make the header italic from here. And so these are changes that we'll have to make in the custom CSS. However, we can make the tagline taller, and we can change the color. So let's do that here. Take a look at the result. Okay. And then let's write some CSS code to make that look the way we want it to look. So in order for us to affect the, uh, the tagline, that is dot custom pound sign header space pound sign logo and then curly bracket space space curly bracket move back up into the space tab over and let's see we said we wanted to make that italics so that would be font style colon i t a l i c semicolon and then we also said we want to make that tagline um, bold so in that case that is dot custom space header tagline and that would be uh, font weight colon bold semicolon. One, see, you can see one of the reasons why I like using the text editor, uh, text editor like this is because um, it has IntelliSense, so the right answer to something pops up along here. You can see that I've mistyped something that is I, actually a, a colon in place of semicolon there, so it's got a little indication that I have uh, messed up. So this is one of the reasons why uh, this is far superior to the standard text editor, at least for somebody with my level of expertise. Come up over here to save that. Pick up our um, FTP client, upload that to the website, go to the website, and refresh. And there it is. This is now bold, and this is now italicized. Now there is a lot of other code associated with this though. Okay, if you come over here to layout, you can see that, for example, the header logo font size is set here at 3.6 EM. And the tagline uh, font size is set at 1.4 EM. And then the header and logo colors are set down uh, here towards the bottom. And you've got uh, logo color and a tagline color and so there's a whole bunch of different places where uh, you know different things are set in fact there's probably even something uh, in here in style CSS you can see that the font weight in, um, in style CSS for the logo is set to bold and for tagline it's set to normal and so you have the definitions for logo and tagline in a variety of different places. And all we've done here is just pick the one thing we wanted to change. We wanted to make it italic, and we wanted to make this bold. And we just made that one change in, in this location. The benefit for doing that is that um, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot when things aren't working correctly. If you only have simple declarations here, you don't repeat stuff here that's elsewhere. It loads faster because it has less CSS that has to load. And the results are a lot more predictable. If you have a habit of duplicating information you know, from file to file, then um, you might change it in one file, but that might not... Um, solve your problem because it's defined someplace else. So 
the two pieces of best practice that we've talked about here are first use design options whenever the um, element can be directly edited using dyno design options and secondly use the minimum amount of code necessary in order to make the change that you want okay so that wraps up lesson one of the tailoring thesis like a pro tutorial series in lesson two we're going to take up php